Uh, first of all, credit to a really, really talented Detroit team. Uh, we knew they would come in here and, and, and push us on the defensive end because of their individual talent. You know, they got some guys that can really score the ball, starting with Antoine Davis. Uh, you know, he goes for 27 points, took a lot of shots to get him, but, you know, he's been averaging about 20 shots a game. Obviously, a catch goes for 19 and 10. Uh, we were concerned about McAdoo coming into the game. We did a pretty good job on him, challenged Noah Locke um, this week in practice to do a good job, and he and other guys did a good job on him. But, you know, Detroit is, is a tough team because they can really score the ball. They can make threes. You know, they, they hit nine threes. They shoot a lot of threes. So anytime you can make the three, you can stay in the game. Uh, that being said, you know, you can't um, accept in victory what you wouldn't accept in defeat. And I didn't think that we guarded the ball very well today. I didn't think that we guarded the three-point line very well. I thought that there were some times when we really miscommunicated on some switches. Guys were able to get in the lane, either get to the rim or spray out. Although we won the defensive, I mean, the rebounding margin, um, rebounding battle by four, there's still way too many offensive rebounds. They get 11 offensive rebounds. Like I said in the last press conference, I hate to have to come back in here and say it again. That means that our coaching staff, we have to do a better job of convincing our guys that that matters. Uh, we couldn't emphasize it more in the last three days. And uh, we got to get better all around on the defensive end and on the glass. That was where my main concern was. Mike, Mike, does it, uh, does it bother you that you guys, your ball pressure was so good against Navy? Mm -hmm. Does it bother you to just kind of take a step back just one game later? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we came in the game wanting to pick these guys up full court and turn them, knowing that they only played about seven or eight guys. Um, I wanted to press more. That's, that's probably on me for not, you know, making that call. But I still wanted – I didn't think our full court man-to-man -man was good enough in order to apply even more pressure. I thought we would get hurt on the back end. They were shooting the ball so well. Um, and then when they, when they got the ball in the, in the front court, um, you know, they, they kind of danced and did what they wanted to do. You know, like you said, we didn't harass the ball. Uh, we didn't get in the guys the way we did Navy. I think that their individual talent across the board is better than Navy's. Navy had a couple guys that can handle it, but for the most part, they had guys that were looking to shoot it and could only shoot it. Whereas these guys had, had you know, Detroit had guys that could do both. So that that presents a different challenge, but hey, this is this is this is what it is. This is you know you're gonna play again. We play Mississippi State. We're gonna this is the ACC <laughs> Power Five teams. Like you're gonna see guys that can do both, and we got to do a better job when we guard the, when we have to guard those guys. Yeah, this is the third game in a row. I guess you've talked mm -hmm. about rebounding not yep. being where you want it to be. When you watch film or, or mm -hmm. you analyze it, what what is missing? I think we're missing a physicality on the glass. I think that when the shot goes up, we got too many guys watching and there are not, not enough guys hitting right away. As Soon as the shot goes up, we should be looking for the closest guy to absolutely nail, and we aren't doing that, and it's frustrating. Uh, Coach, if you could just talk about Jalen. It seemed like he really wasn't able to get into a rhythm tonight, uh, you know, kind of struggled. I thought that uh, defensively he may have uh, let up a little bit because his offense was struggling. Just talk about his struggles tonight. Well, if you saw it, you know, I think it was pretty apparent, unfortunately. I expect more from Jalen. We all do. He's a better player than he showed today. But more importantly, to your point, no matter what's going on on the offensive end, no matter how bad of a night it is for you or anybody else in that locker room, you owe it to your teammates to commit to defending and rebounding. And that's where my disappointment lies, with him and a few other guys as well. My, my two things. One, it seemed like, did you guys leave corners a little too much on those on some of those penetration? It looked like some pretty good looks from them. Yeah, we didn't want to help. We never want to help out of the strong side corner. But the fact of the matter is, you know, if you're in that strong side corner and you see the ball coming downhill, it's hard to not pull in and, and want to provide some help. So that goes back to our inability to guard the ball. But at the same time, we do have to uphold our defensive standards and what we work on every day and not help off of the strong side corner. We got to get that help from the back side. We got to get big guys coming over and protecting the rim when we do get beat. We're not going to always keep the ball out of the paint, although that's our objective. Uh, when guys do occasionally get beaten, and right now it's happening far too often, uh, we need big guys coming over and, and, and making a hard play on the ball. You know, um, that didn't happen enough tonight. And then on the other side, there was a stretch there, particularly end of the first half, kind of beginning of the second. You guys got some stops strung together. Mm -hmm. And then off misses, you were really pushing, getting yeah. the ball out and transition. Is that 
kind of what you want to see when your defense is playing the way you yeah, want it to? Yeah, I mean, that's how it should look. That's the fun way to play. That's how we want to play. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough stretches where we were, where, where, uh, we were able to do that, you know, which is really hard because it's all we talked about the last three days leading up to it. We got to get stops. You know, the game is easier. The game is more fun when we, when we can get a stop and, and rebound and run and get out in transition. We got some guys that can shoot the ball and, and, and push the pace. But you can't get into that type of style of play if you're constantly taking the ball out of the net. How much of that is uh, mindset and, or, or lack of focus? Or, or is it a combination of both? And how much does that surprise you at this point? Uh, you know, probably a little bit of both. I would like to think that, first of all, let me just say this. Our team has not embraced what the defensive identity of this team needs to be. We haven't embraced that yet. I thought that we were moving in the right direction against Navy. You know, we, 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 we said in a huddle at some point, maybe in the first half, let's hold these guys to 60. And they got exactly 60. And guys were like into it. Maybe I need to set a number every game. Uh, but we have not embraced, you know, having a defensive identity of guarding the ball, keeping it out of the paint, gapping the ball, being there on the catch, taking away rhythm threes, all the things that we talk about every day enough to allow us to get into those stretches like we had in the first half we were, where we were able to get stops and run. That, that has to come from our leadership and our locker room, and it has to filter down to everybody that's on the floor. Coach, it did seem like in terms of your uh, transition, you got some good things out of transition. In mm -hmm. the half court, um, mm -hmm. seemed like the half court execution offensively mm -hmm. uh, was still a little disjointed. I know mm -hmm. Dre ended up shooting six threes a night. Are you mm -hmm. comfortable with that? And just kind of talk about the half court execution. Yeah, I think he took one or two that were a little ill-advised, uh, but I think the other ones were good ones. He just didn't knock them down. I thought Dre was great. You know, a lot of people have been hard on Dre. He's been hard on himself. He can care less about what people think. Uh, but he's hard on himself, and sometimes that prevents him from – playing at his best. So it was good to see him do some good things. Without Dre Davis, we don't win this game, not only the 18 points, but the fact that he gets four off rebounds. And one of those plays that led to a spark was him addressing something that I, I really got on him about in film. You know, last previous game, he tried to dribble a loose ball. That's a cardinal sin. You dive on a loose ball. He dove on a loose ball today, and it ignited a break, that, which led to a layup. That's growth. That's growth. That's what you want to see from your guys. Yeah, yeah Mike, you've got Mississippi State next, then possibly Maryland, then at Michigan State, then mm -hmm. at NC State before you come back here. Do you think maybe your team um, needs to be challenged more by more named teams? I mean, you played the first four at home against you know, solid teams, but not the mm -hmm. kind of teams that, that you, you'll see in the NCAA tournament. Well, if that's the mindset of these guys, we, we got the wrong mindset. Because, as you can see, none of these were easy, you know. I mean, even Navy, we pull away late, but, you know, that was a tough game. And every one of these other ones were tough. And, you know, I, I don't expect us to, like, turn on a switch, you know. <laughs> no way. Like, we have to get better. And it doesn't matter who we play, whether it's an ACC school, a SEC school, a MAC school. <laughs> We, we have to do some things a lot better on the defensive end and on the glass in order for us to beat anybody. Mike, it seems like, you know, late game situations, you have a lot of trust in, in Noah to be able to take that shot. What has yeah. he shown you? And is, is that the guy that, you know, when you guys need a bucket, you want to make sure he gets a good look? Yeah, you know, we, we felt like Noah had a good rhythm offensively. Um, you know, he goes four of six from three, six of nine, you know, he was good offensively today. I thought he was good both ways. I thought he was really good both ways. He really put, put a concerted effort together defensively. He made shots. We're accustomed to him doing that. He's a guy that we definitely want to get the ball in his hands, you know, in the game because he can do both. He can put it down and create a shot and also, you know, make jump shots. He hit a really tough shot. I'll give Coach Ross a lot of credit. He drew that one up. You know, we talked about trying to get it in his hands. We actually drew something up that we hadn't spent a lot of time running. And we were able to execute, and Noah hit a really difficult shot. But he's a, he's a guy that can make those types of shots. He's just got to give us that type of defensive effort when he goes one of six from three and not just four of six from three. But he was great today. Mike, in the, in the second half, uh, I don't think we saw Mason or Matt. Matt looked like he was under the weather. So yeah. Just a little ill. Yeah. You know, I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to get ahead of myself on Matt. It sounds like dehydration has something to do with it. 
Um, so we just couldn't play him physically. He just couldn't go. He's a tough kid. He would have loved to have gone. But um, he just didn't have the energy to play. We were worried about him, so we kept him out. Uh, as far as Mason, I need more from Mason. You know, he, he had a rough go at it in the first half. I didn't like his response, so I didn't play him in the second half. Anything else? Great, thanks. We're back with uh, Dre Davis and Malik Williams.